Deuteronomy 3. Then we turned and went up the road toward Bashan. Og, king of Bashan, and all his army came out to fight us at Idri. The Lord said to me, Don't be afraid of Og. I will hand him, his whole army, and his land over to you. Do to him what you did to Sion, king of the Amorites, who ruled in Heshbon. So the Lord our God gave us Og, king of Bashan, and all his army. We defeated them and left no one alive. Then we captured all of Og's cities. We captured all sixty of them. We took the whole area of Argob, Og's kingdom, in Bashan. All these were strong cities. They had high walls and gates with bars. And there were also many small towns with no walls. We completely destroyed them. We destroyed them like the cities of Sion, king of Heshbon. We killed all the men, women, and children. But we kept all the cattle and valuable things from the cities for ourselves. So at that time, we took the land east of the Jordan River. We took it from these two Amorite kings. It went from the Arnon Ravine to Mount Hermon. Hermon is called Sirion by the Sidonian people. The Amorites call it Senir. We captured all the cities on the high plain and all of Gilead. We took all of Bashan as far as Salakah and Idri. These were towns in Og's kingdom of Bashan. Only Og, king of Bashan, was left of the few Rephites. His bed was made of iron. It was more than 13 feet long and 6 feet wide. It is still in the Amorite city of Rabbah. At that time we took the land to be our own. I gave it to the people of Reuben and Gad, the land from Aror by the Arnon Ravine. And I gave them half of the mountain country of Gilead and the cities in it. To the eastern half-tribe of Manasseh, I gave the rest of Gilead. And I gave them all of Bashan, the kingdom of Og. The area of Argob in Bashan was called the land of the Rephites. Jar, a descendant of Manasseh, took the whole area of Argob. It went to the border of the Geshurites and Machathites. That land was named for Jar. So even today, Bashan is called the towns of Jar. I gave Gilead to Makir. I gave the Reubenites and the Gadites the land that begins at Gilead. It goes from the Arnon Ravine to the Jabbok River. The middle of the Arnon is the border. The Jabbok River is the Ammonite border. The border on the west was the Jordan River in the Jordan Valley. It goes from Lake Galilee to the Dead Sea, west of Mount Pishkah. At that time I gave you this command. The Lord your God has given you this land as your own. Now your fighting men must take their weapons, and you must lead the other Israelites across the river. Your wives and your young children and your cattle may stay here. I know you have many cattle. They may stay here in the cities I have given you. Some day your Israelite relatives will also have a place to rest. They will receive the land the Lord your God has given them. It is on the other side of the Jordan River. After that, you may each return to the land I have given you. Then I gave this command to Joshua. You have seen for yourself what the Lord your God has done to these two kings. The Lord will do the same thing to all the kingdoms where you are going. Don't be afraid of them. The Lord your God will fight for you. Then I begged the Lord. Lord God, you have begun to show me, your servant, how great you are. You have great strength. No other God in heaven or earth can do the powerful things you do. There is no other God like you. Please let me cross the Jordan River. I want to see the beautiful mountains and Lebanon. But the Lord was angry with me because of you. He would not listen to me. The Lord said to me, that's enough. Don't talk to me any more about it. Climb to the top of Mount Pisgah. Look west, north, south and east. You can look at the land, but you will not cross the Jordan River. Appoint Joshua. Help him be brave and strong. He will lead the people across the river. He will give them the land that they are to inherit. You can only look at it.
so he stayed in the valley opposite Beth Peor. Psalm 85 For the Director of Music, a song of the sons of Korah. Lord, you have been kind to your land. You gave the people of Jacob back their riches. You forgave the guilt of the people. You covered all their sins. You stopped all your anger. You stopped your strong anger. God, our Saviour, bring us back again. Stop being angry with us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you stay angry from now on? Won't you give us life again? Your people would rejoice in you. Lord, show us your love. Save us. I will listen to God the Lord. He has ordered peace for his people who worship him. Don't let them go back to foolishness. God will soon save those who respect him, and his greatness will be seen in our land. Love and truth will belong to God's people. Goodness and peace will be theirs. On earth, people will be loyal to God, and God's goodness will shine down from heaven. The Lord will give his goodness, and the land will give its crops. Goodness will go before God and prepare the way for him. Isaiah 31 How terrible it will be for those people who go down to Egypt for help. They think horses will save them. They think their many chariots and strong horsemen will save them. They don't trust God, the Holy One of Israel. They don't ask the Lord for help. But it is the Lord who is wise and who can bring them trouble. He does not change his warnings. He will rise up and fight against the evil people, and he will fight against those who try to help evil people. The Egyptians are only people and are not God. Their horses are only animals and are not spirit. The Lord will stretch out his arm, and the one who helps will stumble. The people who wanted help will fall. All of them will be destroyed together. The Lord says this to me. When a lion or a lion's cub kills an animal to eat, it stands over the dead animal and roars. A band of shepherds may be assembled against it, but the lion will not be afraid of their yelling. It will not be upset by their noise. So the Lord of Heaven's armies will come down to fight on Mount Zion and on its hill. The Lord of Heaven's armies will defend Jerusalem. He will defend it like birds flying over their nests. He will defend and save it. He will pass over and save Jerusalem. You, children of Israel, come back to the God that you fought against. The time is coming when each of you will stop worshipping the idols of gold and silver that you made. You truly sinned when you made them. Assyria will be defeated by a sword, but not the sword of a man. Assyria will be destroyed, but not by a man's sword. Assyria will run away from the sword of God. But their young men will be caught and made slaves. They will panic, and their place of safety will be destroyed. Their commanders will be terrified. They will see God's battle flag. The Lord said all these things. The Lord's fire is in Jerusalem. His furnace is in Jerusalem. Revelation chapter 1 This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. God gave this revelation to Jesus to show his servants what must soon happen. And Jesus sent his angel to show it to his servant John. John has told everything that he has seen. It is the truth that Jesus Christ told him. It is the message from God. The one who reads the words of God's message is happy. And the people who hear this message and do what is written in it are happy. The time is near when all of this will happen. From John To the seven churches in Asia, grace and peace to you from the one who is and was and is coming, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ. Jesus is the faithful witness. He is the first among those raised from death. He is the ruler of the kings of the earth. He is the one who loves us. And he is the one who made us free from our sins with the blood of his death. 
he made us to be a kingdom of priests who serve God his Father. To Jesus Christ be glory and power for ever and ever. Amen. Look, Jesus is coming with the clouds. Everyone will see him, even those who stabbed him. And all peoples of the earth will cry loudly because of him. Yes, this will happen. Amen. The Lord God says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the one who is and was and is coming. I am the All-Powerful. I am John, and I am your brother in Christ. We are together in Jesus, and we share in these things, in suffering, in the kingdom, and in patience. I was on the island of Patmos because I had preached God's message and the truth about Jesus. On the Lord's day, the Spirit took control of me. I heard a loud voice behind me that sounded like a trumpet. The voice said, write what you see and send that book to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I turned to see who was talking to me. When I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. I saw someone among the lampstands who was like a son of man. He was dressed in a long robe. He had a gold band around his chest. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes were like flames of fire. His feet were like bronze that glows hot in a furnace. His voice was like the noise of flooding water. He held seven stars in his right hand. A sharp two-edged sword came out of his mouth. He looked like the sun, shining at its brightest time. When I saw him, I fell down at his feet like a dead man. He put his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the one who lives. I was dead. But look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and where the dead are. So write the things you see, what is now and what will happen later. Here is the hidden meaning of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands that you saw. The seven lampstands are the seven churches. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches.